Lecture 2, Classical Genetics. Part 4 describes three equations, sex determination, human sex chromosomes, and sex linkage. Equation 2.9, sex determination. Sexual reproduction involves fusion of haploid gametes. Sex, or sexual phenotype, is the structural, functional, and behavioral characteristics that are involved in reproduction and that distinguish males and females. The fundamental difference between males and females is gamete size. Males produce small gametes, females produce relatively large nutrient-rich gametes. Some organisms produce morphologically indistinguishable isogametes, in which case the sexes are designated plus and minus. An individual that produces both male and female gametes is monoecious plant or hermaphroditic animal. Hermaphroditism is common in invertebrates that are sessile, that move slowly or that live in low-density populations. True hermaphrodites produce both male and female gametes. In humans, a condition in which both ovarian and testicular tissue is present in the body is extremely rare. More common, though still rare, disorder called pseudohemaphroditism or false hemaphroditism is caused by different gene mutations. Male pseudohemaphroditism occurs when the newborn has an X and a Y chromosome but is a phenotypic girl due to different problems with testosterone. In the case of female pseudohemaphroditism, an XX fetus is exposed to a testosterone excess from the adrenal glands, and girl may be misidentified as a boy. She has structures resembling male organs. In most vertebrates, especially mammals, males and females are distinguished by both primary and secondary sex characteristics. The primary sex characteristics are the structures directly involved in reproduction. They include sex organs that are associated with reproduction and sexual intercourse, example gratia, the testes, prostate gland and penis in men, and the ovaries, fallopian tubes, oviducts, uterus, vagina and vulva in women. In contrast, secondary sex characteristics include such human features as body hair, pubic hair and beards, distribution of muscle and fat, voice quality and breasts. Dear antlers, Lion manes and peacock tails are examples of secondary sex characteristics in other animals. In general, secondary sex characteristics are used to indicate sexual maturity or sexual readiness and to attract or locate mates or are used by males to compete for females, visual displays and aggression. They are needed for feeding offspring. Sexual dimorphism is morphological differences between the sexes. Sex determination is a mechanism by which sex, male or female, of an individual organism is specified. The way in which the bipotential embryo will develop as male or female in a species. Sex determining mechanisms include chromosomal, genic and environmental sex determining systems. The first type. Chromosomal sex determination occurs when the presence or absence of certain chromosomes control sex phenotype. Variant A. In mammals and some fishes, females have a pair of X chromosomes and males have a pair consisting of one X and one Y chromosome. Carrier type of a woman is 46,XX. Carrier type of a man is 46,XY. Hence, the sex of a baby is determined by the father's sperm. Variant B. In birds, moths, butterflies, some amphibians and some fishes, Males are XX and females are XY. To avoid confusion, these forms are usually expressed as ZZ, male, and ZW, female. Variant C. In grasshoppers, there is no Y chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes. Males have only one X chromosome and are described as being XO. Variant D is very interesting. In Drosophila, the diploid number of chromosomes is 8. Female flies have six autosomes and XX chromosomes, and males have six autosomes plus XY chromosomes. You can find these chromosomes in the picture to the right. Male Y chromosome has a small hook. Autosomes are chromosome pairs that are 
identical in males and females. Sex chromosomes are different in males and females. But fly's sex is not determined by the Y chromosome. It is determined by a balance between genes on the autosomes and genes on the X chromosome by the X to A ratio. It is the number of X chromosomes divided by the number of haploid sets of autosomal chromosomes. In the first variant, an X to A ratio of 1.0, two X chromosomes and two sets of autosomes, two by three is six autosomes, produces a female fly. The fly with six autosomes and XXY sex chromosomes also develops as fully fertile female, in spite of the presence of the Y chromosome. An X to A ratio of 0.5 to haploid sets of autosomes and XY chromosomes produces a normal male, but flies with only a single X develop as sterile males. An X to A ratio between 1.0 and 0.5, three haploid sets of autosomes AAA plus 2X produces an intersex fly with a mixture of male and female characteristics. If the X to A ratio is greater than 1.0, two haploid sets of autosomes AA plus XXX or XXXY or three haploid sets of autosomes AAA plus 4X. A female phenotype is produced by these flies, called metafemales, have serious developmental problems, and many never emerge from the pupil case. An X to A ratio of less than 0.5 produces metamales. This type of sex determination is called the genic balance system. It was discovered by Calvin Bridges in 1921. When the male or female parent produces two different types of gametes with respect to the sex chromosomes, it is said to be the heterogametic sex. When the other parent, female or male respectively, produces gametes that are all the same with respect to the sex chromosomes, such parent is called the homogametic sex. Pay attention to the picture. Female to the left produces all eggs with X chromosome. Male parent produces two types of sperm cells, with X chromosome or with Y chromosome. Hence, the gametes of the male organism determine sex of the daughter organism. This chromosomal mechanism ensures that the two sexes are produced in approximately equal numbers. It is important to understand that even in chromosomal sex determinant systems, sex is actually determined by individual genes. The next variant is chromosomal system, Haploidiploidy. Some insects in the order Dimenoptera, bees, wasps, and ants have no sex chromosomes. Instead, sex is based on the number of chromosome sets found in the nucleus of each cell. Males develop from unfertilized eggs, and females develop from the fertilized eggs. A fertilized egg of a honeybee is diploid and gives rise to a female bee either a worker or a queen, depending on the diet during larval life. Note that the environment affects the phenotype. An unfertilized egg is haploid and gives rise to a male drone. Males produce sperm by mitosis. They are already haploid, so all offspring receive the same set of paternal genes. The second type of sex determination. In genic sex determination, sex is determined by particular genes at one or more loci, but there are no obvious differences in the chromosomes of males and females. There are no sex chromosomes. This system is present in some plants, fungi, protozoans, and other animals. In the yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti, sex is determined by a single pair of alleles, big M and small m, dominant gene and recessive gene. Heterozygous big M small m mosquito is a male, homozygous small m small m is a female. The third type. In environmental sex determination, sex is determined fully or in part by environmental factors. In turtles and crocodiles, sex is determined by the prevailing temperature during the incubation of the fertilized eggs. In turtles, lower temperatures, 26, 
28 degrees of centigrade produce all males. At temperatures over 30 degrees, all eggs become females. Intermediate temperatures produce both sexes. In alligators, males are produced only at intermediate temperatures, around 33 degrees of centigrade. Cooler conditions, 29-31 degrees, and really warm temperatures, 35 degrees, produce females. This type of sex determination is based on temperature-dependent activity of the enzyme aromatase that converts testosterone into estrogen. Some organisms have location-dependent sex determination. Lava of banelia worms settle on the ocean floor, where they live and grow into adult female worms. If a lava settles and finds itself near an adult female, it crawls into her proboscis, essentially a long, flexible snout, and develops into a tiny male worm. The male lives its entire life inside the female, more or less like a parasite. His only job is to produce sperm to fertilize the female's eggs. In the picture to the right we can find female worm, length of the body is 10 cm, and its proboscis may extend 1 meter. Male size is approximately 3 mm. Sleeper limpets, Crepidula fornicata, mollusks, cling to rocks in shallow seawater environments and live in stacks, one on top of another. Sex is determined environmentally by the limpet's position in the stack. Each limpet begins life as a swimming lava. If a lava settles on bare rock, it becomes a female. It then produces chemicals that attract other larvae, which settle on top of it. These larvae develop into males, which then serve as mates for the limpet below. If a male settles on top of another male, the one on the bottom becomes a female to accommodate the new circumstances. After a period of time, the males on top develop into females and in turn attract additional larvae that settle on top of the stack, develop into males and serve as mates for the limpets under them. Some coral reef fish change sex depending on their social situations. For example, blue-headed rats Talassoma bifaciatum commonly live in large groups or schools, where successful reproduction is typically limited to one male. A male controls a harem of yellow females, and the females have a dominance hierarchy among themselves. If the male dies or disappears, the top-ranking female changes into a male within a few days. Her ovaries, rigorous, testes develop, and she, he, soon produces sperm and takes over control of the harem. Such transformation occurs due to changes in genes activity. Question 10. Human sex chromosomes. The human X and Y chromosomes have evolved from a pair of ancestral chromosomes during the past 300 million years. The Y chromosome lost most of its genes and became greatly reduced in size. Now the X and Y chromosomes differ in size and genetic content. They are homologous only in the pseudo-autosomal regions, PAR. PAR1 is essential for XY chromosome pairing in meiosis in the male. As a result of a crossover, genes found in the PAR1 region could be transferred from the X to the Y chromosome or vice versa, and will display the same pattern of inheritance as that of genes located on autosomes, hence the name pseudo-autosomal. The X chromosome contains more than a thousand identified genes. The X chromosome is incredibly important for normal human development. Many genes are required for survival. For example, the gene ALAS2 directs formation of red blood cells, ATP7A regulates copper levels in the body. whole 4 a 5 is required for normal kidney function. DMD controls muscle function and pathways between nerve cells. And F8 is responsible for normal blood clotting. When no X is present, the zygote cannot commence development. Surprisingly, only one gene on the X chromosome, called DAX1, has a role in determining female phenotype. All the other genes that act to make females are found on the autosomes. Hence, not only females, 
but males also have such genes. In the picture to the right, we can find many mutations that are localized on the X chromosome and cause diseases. Genetic function of the Y chromosome is limited to inducing male development during embryogenesis and to maintaining spermatogenesis in adult males. Consequently, any individual with at least one Y chromosome is a male. The Y chromosome has 85 protein encoding genes. Most of Y doesn't seem to have any genes at all. Slightly over half of the Y chromosome is junk DNA. In the picture to the right, we can find condensed region. It is indicated by number 3, heterochromatin, inactive genetic material. The most important gene is SRY, the self-determining region of the Y chromosome, which was discovered in 1990. It plays a key role in development of male sexual characteristics and is also known as the testis determining factor, TDF gene. Early in development, all humans possess undifferentiated gyanets and both male and female reproductive ducts. If the gene SRY is turned on about 6 weeks after fertilization, it acts with at least one other gene on chromosome 17 to stimulate the expression of male phenotype in the form of testes. The testes themselves secrete testosterone the hormone responsible for the expression of most traits belonging to males, and malarian inhibiting substance. It causes the degeneration of the female reproductive ducts. In the absence of the SRY protein, the embryo develops egg-producing ovaries. Since cells in a male contain a single X chromosome and cells in a female contain two X chromosomes, Females contain twice as many copies of the genes on the X chromosome per cell as do males. To equalize the dosage of X chromosome genes between the two sexes, dosage compensation, one of the two X chromosomes in each cell of all female mammals is inactivated by formation of a heterochromatin mass, sex chromatin. It is also called bar body in epithelial cells. It does not occur in male cells having one X. The process of X inactivation is achieved by differential methylation of DNA and occurs at around 15-16 days gestation, when the embryo consists of approximately 5000 cells. If a female mammal has different forms or alleles of a particular gene on each of her two X chromosomes, then about half of her cells will express one of the alleles and about half the other allele. Question 11. Sex linkage. Walter Sutton had suggested that genes are located on chromosomes, but he did not experiment to show that his idea was correct. However, Thomas Morgan did many experiments with fruit flies, which showed that chromosomes carry the genes that determine traits. Morgan studied eye color of Drosophila. The wild type eye color is red. What does it mean wild type? It means commonly found in nature or arbitrarily designated as normal. In 1910, Morgan discovered a recessive mutation that causes white eyes. In one experiment, Morgan crossed a red-eyed female fruit fly with a white-eyed male fly. The F1 generation offspring of this cross had red eyes. The allele for red eye color appeared to be dominant, since none of the offspring had white eyes. When the females and the males of the F1 generation were crossed, see the picture to the left, about 75% of the F2 generation had red eyes. The other 25% had white eyes. 3 to 1 ratio. The recessive trait reappeared in the second generation. At first glance, the inheritance of Icali seemed to follow Mendes rules of inheritance. But in the picture we can see that half of progeny were red-eyed females, quarter were red-eyed males, quarter were white-eyed males. Notice that all the females had red eyes, only males had white eyes. 
inheritance of Icala in fruit flies did not seem to follow Mendes' rules after all. The alleles for Icala appeared to be inherited differently in male and female flies. Morgan guessed that the trait for Icala in fruit flies was related to the organism's sex, or was sex-linked. He hypothesized that a gene for eye color in fruit flies was found on the X chromosome only. Therefore, the color of the female's eyes was determined by two genes, one on each X chromosome. The male's eye color was determined by one gene, located on its single X chromosome. In the picture to the left, we can see that dominant gene, big W, determines red eyes, small W determines white eyes. Heterozygous female can produce two types of gametes with dominant and recessive genes, big W and small w. Male organism also can produce two types of gametes, but half of gametes have X chromosome with dominant gene, half of gametes have Y chromosome only, hence only 25% of fruit flies in the F2 generation have white eyes and all are males. Males, therefore, cannot be either homozygous or heterozygous, but are said to be hemizygous for X-linked loci. Hemizygous organism possesses a single allele at a locus. To verify his hypothesis, Morgan predicted that a cross between a white-eyed female and a red-eyed male would produce all red-eyed females and all white-eyed males. Half the female F2 flies would be white-eyed and half the males also would be white-eyed. When Morgan performed these crosses, the results were exactly as predicted. Therefore, the gene for I. coli must be on the X chromosome. Morgan proved that genes are found on chromosomes, just as Sutton had suggested. Sex-linked characteristics are determined by genes located on the sex chromosomes. Genes on the X chromosome determine X-linked characteristics. Those on the Y chromosome determine Y-linked characteristics. Because little genetic information exists on the Y chromosome in many organisms, most sex-linked characteristics are X-linked. Now we can describe two examples of sex-linked characteristics in human. Red-green color blindness is the inability to see the difference between red and green color. About 8% of males of European ancestry are color blind. One form of red-green color blindness is called proteinopia, red color blindness, or Daltonism, named after John Dalton, English chemist and physician, founder of the atomic theory, who himself was color blind and described his disease in 1794. Another form is deuteranopia, green color blindness, in which someone cannot see green. Genes for red and green blindness occupy different loci on the X chromosome. Another example of the X-linked trait is hemophilia, the failure of blood to clot. Hemophilia was the first human trait recognized to show sex-linked inheritance. Hemophilia A, classical hemophilia, is due to a deficiency of functional antihemophilic factor, factor 8. Hemophilia B, Christmas disease, results from a deficiency of factor 9. Genes HEM A and HEM B reside at a considerable distance from one another on the X chromosome. 